Five Nights at Freddy's has released a lot of cool things throughout the year, such as the PC games, Five Nights at Freddy's AR Special Delivery, FNAF Help Wanted, and merchandise. But one of the key things that has been released was the books. Now, I'm doing the summary of each book from the three series of novels to the Fazbear Fright series. And in the next couple of videos, I will be doing summaries of each story in the Fazbear Fright books. And I will also be covering the first book, Into the Pit. And speaking of Into the Pit, I will be doing a summary of this chapter. Now, without saying any spoilers, this was a really great chapter, especially in the first book. But now I will be getting onto the spoilers, which is the main summary. If you don't want to hear any spoilers that I recommend you click off the video and read it but if you want to listen that's completely fine but just letting you guys know that this is my first summary so if there's anything i need to change let me know down in the comments section below so without further ado let's get into the first story into the pit the main character in this chapter is oswald he's a person who loves to read manga play games and watch sci-fi films the town that he lives in is basically dead it's been like that for three years ever since a mill in his town was shut down, causing so many job losses, including his father's job. This made people either move out of town or find a job that doesn't really pay much. Oswald's friend Ben was one of the people to move out of town, which affected Oswald. Oswald is at his last day of school. A lot of people are either playing on their game consoles or their phones. This is during modern times because later in the book, it does mention modern TV services like Netflix and YouTube. Oswald decides to draw characters, but it is a bear, a chicken, and a bunny. Which, they don't say it's the original FNAF animatronics, but it does kind of resemble it. When Oswald came home from his last day, his dad gives him an idea to go to the library and go to Jeff's Pizza, which is one of the only places that are still running in the town. So the next day, Oswald's dad brings him over to the library to find a book and read and quote unquote, surf the web as his dad likes to call it. A couple hours later, Oswald goes to Jeff's Pizza. Oswald describes it as, the big empty space beyond the booths and tables was like a dance floor where nobody danced. The walls were painted a pale yellow but they must have used cheap paint or only one coat because shapes of whatever had been on the walls before were still visible it had probably been some kind of mural with people or animals but now it's shadows behind a thin veil of yellow paint Oswald sometimes tries to figure out what the shapes were but they were too blobby to make out then there was the stage that never got used standing empty but seemingly waiting for something through a feature even weirder than the stage, lay in the back right corner. It was a large rectangular pen surrounded by yellow netting, but it had been roped off with a sign that said, Do not use. The pen itself was filled with red, blue, and green plastic balls that had probably been brightly colored once, but now were faded with fuzzy with dust. The only worker at Jeff's Pizza is Jeff himself. He does all the cooking, managing, and everything a person would do at a restaurant. Jeff is described as by Oswald, a guy who always looks tired, his hair is sticking up and has dark moon-like shadows on his eyes, showing how tired he is. The strange thing that he notices that I've quoted before was how the stage looks empty with little painting covering some sort of mural, but he can't figure out what it is. Now he looks over to the ball pit. It's got a do not use sign around it and it's very old and dusty because no one has used it for years. So he goes to get a slice and a drink, since that he's all able to get, and he reads a book. Jeff lets him have some spare pizza in the back that is in the back of the kitchen, and eventually his dad picks him up. Oswald does the same routine for a couple of weeks, until he gets a text from his friend that is having a good time on vacation, making Oswald sick of the same thing that he's been doing every week. The next day, he gets into an argument with his dad and decides to do a prank on him. He goes into the dirty, dusty ball pit. He first takes off his shoes and goes in. He stays in there for about 100 seconds and he gets up but the whole environment has changed. He looked over to where he put his shoes, but they're gone. He hears kids, arcade games, and songs playing. He looks at the stage and there are three animatronics, like the ones he has been drawing. He notices the mural behind them and reads, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He has traveled back in time when Freddy was, was thriving. Another thing he notices is the different hairstyles of both the adults and the children. The hair is all puffy, which makes him question, what time or year is he in? He meets two kids while he is there called Chip and Mike. Oswald tries to avoid talking to them about stuff in the future. He keeps telling himself like he can't talk about cell phones or any online streaming service. 
What's good is that all of them like the same topics and they immediately become good friends. And Mike and Chip invite Oswald to play some skee ball. Later on, Oswald tells him that he has to go and they completely understand. Oswald tries to figure out how he can get back to his present time, and he realizes he can go back the same way he got in. So he gets back into the ball pit for about 100 seconds and comes up back to Jeff's Pizza. When he was at Freddy Fazbear's, he thought all the time had passed, but when he came back up, there was barely any time change at all when his dad texts him, I'll be in front in two minutes, like what he always texts Oswald when he is near the pizzeria. Dad drops him off at the library, Oswald goes straight to Jeff's and hops into the ball pit. As soon as he got out, he was wandering around the place and saw a calendar near the office, and the date that he was at was 1985. Mike and Chip see him and they go as to go ski balling, but Oswald doesn't want to because he feels bad because they've been paying for him like his pizza and the games. They said that they don't mind at all, which surprises Oswald. When he gets up, he feels something heavy in his pockets and appears to be stacks of Fazbear tokens, which confuses him, but he doesn't want to question it even further. But what he does notice is that the figure in a yellow bunny costume is standing in the corner. He even noticed it on the previous day when the bunny was walking past him, but apparently Oswald is the only one who can see him, which is odd to him. The bunny has a mask where you can see no expression, it's just white eyes and a grin. Oswald turns his head away from the bunny and starts to play skee ball with the other two kids. Oswald is having a great time and eventually he has to tell them he has to go. And Oswald gets back into the pit and arrives back at Jeff's. His dad on the way to the library, how old he was in 1985. And his dad says that he was about his age. But when Oswald asked him what was before Jeff's, his dad started to hesitate and said, oh, it closed. Meaning that his dad must have known about something, but he's not telling Oswald. After the library, Oswald goes back into Jeff's and heads into the ball pit. Same time for about 100 seconds, but when he got up, everything was completely different that day in 1985. Parents were running around with their children, scared and stunned about what has been going on. Oswald is trying to find Chip and Mike, hoping that they were okay until Oswald saw that same bunny. The same yellow bunny that has been staring at him near a door. The bunny lures Oswald to come with him and Oswald follows. The bunny takes him down a long hallway and ends up coming to a party room. Oswald is shocked when he sees dead kids lined up, either with their eyes closed or open, which terrifies Oswald. He runs to the ball pit, almost getting grabbed the bunny, and goes back to present time. When Oswald arrives back to his present time, his dad goes yelling at him about how he shouldn't go into the ball pit and that he didn't respond to his dad a lot. But as soon as they were about to walk out, the bunny grabs Oswald's dad and puts him into the ball pit, and all Oswald sees is his dad's shoe, but it replaces with the bunny shoe. The bunny comes out of the ball pit and escorts Oswald out of the pizzeria, and it was mentioned earlier that Oswald was the only one to see the bunny, and he was right because Jeff thought that the bunny was Oswald's dad, and said bye to the both of them, thinking that it was his dad. So the bunny takes Oswald home, and as soon as they park at the house, Oswald runs, but the bunny somehow appears in front of him like he teleported. The bunny takes Oswald to the house and Oswald runs to his room. He talks to his mom about how something has happened to his dad, but his mom says that she'll be there soon. When she got home, Oswald is saying that something has happened to his dad, but his mom responds with, your dad's laying in bed, making Oswald so confused. He goes to bed and wakes up the next day to go to school. When Oswald wakes up, he sees the bunny sitting right in front of him while he's eating breakfast. Then he gets ready to go to school. He tells him that Oswald is going to take the bus home. When Oswald is at school, he couldn't stop thinking about it all day. So when he got home, he went straight to his room to do homework. And eventually when they got to dinner, the bunny made pizza and set it out for everyone, but he didn't eat it. He just sat there with a mask, staring and having a grin, not even touching his pizza. After Oswald ate dinner, he went upstairs and thought of a plan, which was to get back to Jeff's Pizza to find his dad. So after Oswald got back from school, he waited till the night to go back to the pizzeria. So he waited till the night to sneak past to his parents. 
which is a room that's right in front of him. He saw that the bunny was just staring at the ceiling, not knowing he was asleep because of his white eyes. He sneaked past them and started to go to Jeff's. When Oswald arrives at the pizzeria, Jeff asked him if Oswald wanted a soda, and Oswald says yes to his offer. Oswald went to the ball pit to find his dad. He went in and he felt a body. He kept feeling it and feeling it until he was dragging him out, confirming it was his dad, but he was unconscious. He was pulling him out until the bunny stopped him. Oswald and the yellow bunny had a huge fight in the ball pit. Oswald ran into him, making the bunny lose his stability until he regained it. Eventually, the bunny ran at Oswald and grabbed a hold of him. The bunny was opening its mouth and the mask had sharp teeth. Instead of taking the bite to his neck, he took it to the arm, which caused Oswald a severe amount of pain. Oswald hit the bunny, and the bunny fell off and got tangled in the ropes around his neck. The bunny was flying around like a fish, but no noise came from him. He was waving his hand at Oswald for help, but because of the torture that Oswald went through, he didn't help at all. So after a while, the bunny had died, causing Oswald to survive. Oswald blinked and he saw the costume was empty. It was all dirty and rotten, making it seem it was there for years. Oswald went to his dad and his dad regained consciousness. They both asked each other if they were okay and they left. And Jeff said at the end, oh, you forgot your drink. You guys, is the first summary in the Into the Pit book. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this took me two days to do. So I started writing the script on Saturday and I edited the video. Oh, well, actually I wrote the script on Sat on Friday and then I um I edited the video on Saturday and but you guys are seeing this on a Sunday. So, yeah, I am so excited about this you guys and I know that this is going to be a really amazing project or slash series on my channel. And yeah, I'm I'm enjoying this you guys so thank you so much for watching the video if you guys did enjoy make sure to hit that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe for more videos because to be beautiful is coming now i'm going to be doing or i'm going to be starting the to be beautiful summary and i'm excited about that so thank you so much for watching if you guys did enjoy make sure, um, like i said make sure to leave a like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one